Hi, I am Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In the preceding video, we discussed the discovery, structure and the nomenclature of cephalosporins. If you did not watch the video, hit the i button on top right of this video to watch it. For the other topics of antibiotics, click on the links given in the description below this video. In this lesson, we shall try to understand the chemistry of cephalosporins. Cephalosporins are the second group of beta-lactam antibiotic family to be discovered after penicillins. Cephalosporins are also known as extended spectrum beta-lactams. They differ from penicillins by having the acetidinone ring that is a four-membered beta-lactam ring fused to a dihydrothiazine ring rather than a thiazolidine ring. The other difference which is more significant is the existence or the presence of the substituent at position 3 of the fused ring system. This now allows for molecular variations to be introduced at the 7 amino group as in penicillins as well as to effect changes in properties by diversifying the moieties at position 3. As 6-APA became the precursor for the synthesis of all semi-synthetic penicillins, so does the corresponding 7-amino cephalosporonic acid that is 7-ACA serve the analogous function for the cephalosporins. The first member of cephalosporins is cephalosporin C which is isolated from extracts of cephalosporium acrimonium. It contains an amino adipic acyl group at position 7 and an acetoxymethyl group at position 3. It exhibited disappointing antibacterial activity. Even the modest molecular alterations could not be duplicated. Thus, it was imperative to develop useful methods to deacylate this clinically useful cephalosporin to 7-amino cephalosporonic acid abbreviated 7-ACA. There are at least two methods available to produce 7-ACA in commercial quantities. It became apparent that varying the 7-acyl substituent gave useful new drugs with broader antibacterial spectra than did the earlier penicillins. In addition, many of these new drugs show high resistance to beta-lactamase enzymes. Variations of the substituent at position 3 affected such factors as absorption rates, tissue distribution and metabolic features. Synthesis of 7-ACA or cephalosporin analogues at C7. Chemical or enzymatic hydrolysis of cephalosporin C allows to obtain large quantities of 7-ACA. A number of semi-synthetic beta-lactam cephalosporin antibiotics were created by acylating the amino group of the cephalosporin C with various acid derivatives that are analogous to the semi-synthetic penicillin series and currently there are about 25,000 of them of which about 100 are used in medicine. Unlike penicillins, semi-synthetic cephalosporins are synthesized not only by expanding the spectrum of various acids by which 7-ACA is acylated but also by internal modifications of amino cephalosporonic acid that is at R1 and R2 positions of the beta-lactam ring. The production of 7-ACA and related precursors from cephalosporin C is outlined here. Mild hydrolysis yielded only small quantities of the desired product plus 3-hydroxymethyl 7-ACA and lactone formed by the 4-carboxylic acid with 3-hydroxy group. A more efficient synthesis requires protecting the 2-carboxyl groups of the cephalosporin by silylation. The compound is then chlorinated with phosphorus pentachloride which activates the amide linkage into an iminochloride. Alcoholosis with anhydrous methanol or ethanol affords the iminoether that is imidate which is readily hydrolyzes with water yielding the free amine and the 4-carboxyl group. Another procedure involved by the use of anhydrous formic acid rather than water as the solvent involved the use of nitrosyl chloride as the diazotizing agent. Followed by hydrolysis of the intermediate, this procedure results in 7-ACA. More recently, the discovery of acylase enzymes and their utilization in immobilized form produced usable enzyme technology for cleavage of the C7 side chain. Deacetylation of 7-ACA to 3-hydroxymethyl 7-ACA can be achieved with cold aqueous sodium hydroxide in less than 1 hour or 
on a larger scale enzymatically as in the synthesis of sephiroxine. 7 ACA can be converted to 7 amino desacetyl cephalosporonic acid abbreviated 7 ADCA by hydrogenolysis of 7 ACA over palladium catalyst. The 7 ADCA is then the starting compound for the orally effective 3 methyl cephalosporins such as cephalexin and cephedrine, which all have the 3 methyl group as the common feature. A different approach to 7 ADCA is by ring expansion of the penicillin structure. This is achieved by first oxidizing penicillin G or V to its sulfoxide followed by a ring expansion rearrangement whereby one of the two methyl groups inserts into the thiazolidine ring resulting in the thiazine ring. The process is catalyzed by pyridine hydrobromide on the silyl protected penicillin sulfoxide. Hydrolysis of the silyl ester yields 7 ADCA. The figure shown here offers examples of semi-synthetic cephalosporin synthesis. Treatment of 7 ACA with 2 thenyl acetyl chloride in the presence of triethylamine affords cephalothin. Even though cephazolin can be prepared in 2 steps from 7 ACA with 1H tetrazolyl 1 acetyl chloride, then nucleophilically displacing the 3 acetoxy group with 5 methyl 1,3,4 thiadiazol 2 thiol, a claimed 90% yield 1 step reaction that involves treating 7 ACA with a 1 mole equivalent of 5 methyl. 1,3,4 thiadiazolyl, 1H tetrazolyl, 1 thioacetate in aqueous acetone is also available. The preparation of cephamandal includes the nucleophilic displacement of the 3 acetoxy function by reflexing with an acetone solution containing excess 5 mercapto 1 methyl tetrazol. This step can be carried out by a heterocyclothiomethyl compound on either cephalosporin C, 7 ACA or acylated 7 ACA. Cephapyrin can be synthesized by acylating the 7 amino group of 7 ACA with bromoacetyl bromide, then displacing the active bromine atom with 4 pyridine thiol. Finally, cephalexin can be prepared from 7 ACDA whose amino and carboxylic acid groups are first protected with the trimethylsilyl chloride. The secondary amine function is then acylated with phenylglycyl chloride hydrochloride which affords the desired product after deblocking with aqueous ammonia. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, the chemistry of cephalosporins. In the next lesson, we will discuss the classification of cephalosporins. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.